Anybody who goes to a psychoanalyst ought to have his head examined. <laughs> so let's examine ours. And we will try to determine what makes a person normal and also what are the indications that one is becoming not so abnormal as to need a psychiatrist because where there are serious cases of mental illness these must be cared for by a psychiatrist and psychiatry belongs in the domain of medicine not in the domain of psychology we're not concerned with those now what is the difference between people who are normal and those who have a tendency to be abnormal. The first difference is this. The first difference is this. The normal person has a goal or a purpose in life. Those who are beginning to be abnormal and are losing peace of soul have no goal or purpose in life. The normal have a goal, just as you would not have a gadget in your house ten minutes without asking, what's it for? So you ask the same thing about life. A house is made to live in, a church is a place of worship. So man must have a purpose. And the normal people decide on that before they decide on anything else. And the ultimate normal purpose of man is to be happy. Now happy in that which constitutes his personality. What man wants is his final goal is life. Not life for five more minutes, but just enduring life. Secondly, he wants truth. Not the truth of geography to the exclusion of science, but all truth. And thirdly, he wants love. Not a love that has hate and satiety in it, but an enduring ecstatic love. This is the normal goal of human beings. And perfect life and perfect truth and perfect love is the definition of God. And perfect life and perfect truth and perfect love is the definition of God. In other words, in seeking happiness is seeking God. abnormal person is one who is without a purpose in life. The abnormal person has just a succession of petty little goals. He's very much like, for example, a farmer who might plant wheat one month and then tear up the wheat and plant corn and then tear up the corn. Or he's like a radio station that's tuned into two or three stations at the same time and getting only static. Only static. Minds that are tending to be abnormal are not fixed on any ultimate destiny. They read a book and they're a materialist one week and they're an idealist the next and the communist the next. These people establish false infinites, misplaced infinites. They will, for example, try to make a, well, a god of the flesh and by the intensity of an experience try to make up for some ultimate goal or destiny. By the intensity of an experience try to make up for some ultimate goal or destiny. That produces an unhappiness of mind. Then we come to another distinction. The normal person is governed by reason and will. The abnormal person is governed by instincts, impulses, and also he believes that the subconsciousness is the determinant of his life. A reasonable human being is very much like a ship. Now a pilot has a destiny. He knows where he's going to a port. He directs himself by stars. He communicates his ideas and his orders, rather, down to the engine room. There is a disturbance from the outside by the waves, and sometimes the water will come in here and then it will be set out again. But what is important 
is the fact that the pilot determines the direction of the ship. In other words, he's got a goal or a purpose. The pilot determines the direction of the ship. Now, man is like that, a normal man. First of all, he has a reason. He's interested in truth. He has a will. And when he sees a certain destiny or goal or something that ought to be done, then he wills to do it. At the top of a reasonable man is, is his intellect and his will. Now these affect his emotions. For example, one receives sad news, one cries. It is not the crying that produces the idea of sad news. It is rather the idea that affected the emotions. The reason and will cannot always control the emotions directly, but can control the emotions indirectly by diverting thoughts in another direction. It is true that outside influences, the subconscious mind, the waters that get into the boiler, are affected to a little degree. It is true that social, economic, parental background and influences do in some way affect man, but not seriously. And the combination of these constitutes conscience. He has a fine sense of right and wrong. Now this is a picture of the abnormal. And here's the ship upside down. Upside down. Here is reason and will, completely submerged. What is important for an abnormal person is the subconscious. We are determined to be what we are, cause of something that is buried down in the depths of the mind. This may be part of the heritage of the collective unconsciousness of the human race, so they say. Well, what role does reason play? Reason is only to justify, find excuses very often for the way that one acts. What is the will? Is that important? No. The will is just an arena where the conflict takes place. So it is the subconsciousness in an abnormal person that completely determines his whole life. Reason and will, therefore, are unimportant. Hence, he's not concerned about objective things. He's interested only in finding out what is here in the depths. And that's why he's so keen on analyzing. If he hears a fine piece of music, he's not so much interested in the music, but the way he feels when he hears the music. The objective world and reasons are not the determinants according to the abnormal. Hence, they're not concerned when they find a man who believes in God about his reasons. They do not ask him for evidence. They try to find some clear reason why he ever says he believes in God. Why he ever says he believes in God. You heard the story, didn't you, of the two psychoanalysts who passed one another in the street? One said to the other, good morning, and the other said, I wonder what he meant by that. <laughs>
the contrary. There is a, a repression of reason in order to express the lower instincts and the argument that such an abnormal person will give is, well, it's natural, isn't it? Shouldn't one follow one's nature? Certainly one should. But what is our nature? Our nature is not that of a goat or a pig. Our nature is rational. We're human beings governed not by the subconscious mind, governed by a reason and governed by a will. It is false to say that we can always cure a psychological complex by a physiological outlet. One might just as well say the way to overcome a complex about committing suicide is to jump off the Brooklyn Bridge. Sacrifices that which is more. wrong also for people to think that we are to get rid of conflicts of life. There are certain conflicts that are inevitable in human nature, simply because we're composed of body and soul, and matter and spirit. And therefore, there's always a struggle. There's a cross that's at the very center of human life. No man is ever really happy on the inside until he's at war with himself. No man is ever really happy on the inside until he's at war with himself. At war with that which is base, and which would destroy his Godward tendencies. As our Lord said, I came not to bring peace, but the sword. Not the sword that points and thrusts outward to destroy the neighbor, but the sword that thrusts inward in order to destroy one's egotism and one's lust and one's avarice and all the things that destroy also a peace of mind. The greatest cross in the world is to be without a cross. To be without a cross.